Well, 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 we meet again. Another POE video. Wow, here we go. So much is going on. I want to talk about what I'm playing, my new build. I want to talk about this Bay Class interview, the direction of POE. Uh, it's been crazy. It's been so fun. This league has been insane. I've really enjoyed myself. And uh, I just want to just like let you guys know, uh, just update you on week three here. Um, so first, let's just kind of like just jump into my character. Um, I'm playing SST. I'm an SST cuck, baby. Hell yeah. Um, I do want to shout out, this is Crouching Tuna's build. So I do want to shout this out here. Um, head over to his channel. It's called The Build. That got me excited about Expedition. He talks about his uh, Raider cold convert SST build. It's excellent. He did a really great job on this thing. I just yoinked it. I pretty much just yoinked it. Um, I did start with the uh, Exsanguinate build that I showed you guys in the previous video. It was farming, doing some awesome stuff. It was a nice, strong build, but, you know, it pretty much gets you to that farming stage. And beyond that, it gets pretty tough. And I just wasn't willing to invest that much into it to get it to that point. Because I just like was just using it as a farmer. And then I uh, transferred that into... Um, I transferred that into... Um, the uh, lightning arrow storm uh, lightning arrow storm rain build which was terrible it was terrible I just didn't have enough currency to make that thing work I might go back to it lightning arrow is pretty good but storm rain is just not fun it's not good the the numbers on it just suck all right it's just and it the visuals on it are cancer it's just like when you play that skill it, it just <laughs> floods your eyes with cancer um, so I went into that and now we are cold SST, baby. And um, man, I have been really enjoying this fucking build. Let's just jump into a map and I'll just talk about it a little bit. And then we'll take a look at some of my items. So um, the things that I really enjoy about this are the... Uh, so like last league, one of my favorite builds was the um, mana uh, Archmage, right? I really enjoy just being able to scale scale uh your defenses and your offenses just by scaling mana and it was really nice right because this game especially like these past leagues they do, they do not give you enough defenses so being able to have like a tanky character and scale your defense with the content that you're doing um while you're also scaling your offense is awesome and the same works with with this build right the same works with this build you know, the better shield that you get, the more evasion, the more energy shield you're getting, but also the more chance to block, right? This character, even though it's only at like 4,000, what is this, 4,800 uh, effective EHP, I mean, I rarely die. You know, I've only been playing this for maybe a few days now, and I'm at 93 and close to 94 already. Um, it's just so good, man. It's such a good build. My DPS is probably, I would say, around like 8 or 9 million right now. Um... And I'll talk about some of the things that I can do to, to turn that up a little bit. Um, I don't know if I will. I've kind of, you know, I've done everything I wanted to do. I've done all the bosses that I wanted to do with this thing. So I might, that's usually my marker when it's like time to move on to the next build. Um, but who knows? I, I, you know, I am still enjoying it. So I don't, maybe I will just kind of min-max it to like, you know, whatever. I think I can get around like 15 million. I think that's sort of the... Uh, the state of this uh, this build that you can get it to. You can see it just kind of just shreds everything. Uh, once you kind of have everything going, like my Storm Brand to give me my power charges, you know, drop the haste on it. It just kind of melts things away. There you go. All right. So let's just go look at some of these items here. Um, that was a T16, by the way. Juiced up. Juiced up. This isn't no fast AF video, okay? Um, all right, so this the, the things that are going to be expensive are your helmet because this um, enchant is really expensive right now. And I'll just show you the prices in a second. But the helmet is kind of expensive. And this is a shitty helmet, right? It's just got the enchant on it. And I spent a, I don't remember how much I spent. Maybe it was like 8x on it uh, for, just the, for just, the, um, just the enchant, right? So if you want this with the Redeemer, with minus cold or you're going to craft cold on it you're going to craft all the things on it i mean you're looking at a pretty expensive helmet um so yeah what i'll probably do is i'll probably just throw a redeemer orb on it and craft away right next is the uh shield this is where most of your damage is going to come from um because you're scaling with 
Phantasmal Spectral Shield Throw, which is like 13, or actually it's like 8x right now. Um, I think I think the Watcher's Eye is the expensive part, but um, if we just take a look, Spectral Shield Throw, let's see how much a Phantasmal is going for. I bought this the other day, I think it was like 8x. Um, oh yeah, you can get these pretty cheap now. It looks like they're starting to come down in price. They're still around like seven or eight, but you could probably get it for like five or six. You could probably, I mean, this one's up for three. I might just snipe this one and just sell it off for, for, for like another X. But uh, yeah, so you definitely want the Phantasmal Spectral Shield Throw, but you don't need it until you start scaling your crit, which is like pretty later on. Um, the way you're going to scale your crit right now is through the shield, right? Getting high evasion, high energy shield, because the way that this works with the Phantasmal Spectral Shield, um, the quality on it, it gives you 20, plus 20% crit multi per 100 maximum energy shield. That in line with the Seething Fury, which gives you, you know, this is going to give you that extra crit. Um, and yeah, you're just going to be able to just scale. You're going to be able to get easily 100 a uh, hundred percent on your crit chance and then just scaling the multi and that's where the, the that like min maxing damage is going to come from is from scaling that multi so what i'll do is i'll probably just throw another cluster here and then just you know another crit cluster like kind of what i have here um this is kind of the tree you know thread of hope small you can grab these things again this is just like literally just ripped off from crouching tuna um lionized vision so you can get your pierce so it's like a seven link sort of your amulet, you do want some um, resist. You you know you want to try to get your resist as much as you can from your your jewels here because you know you can you can kind of get it elsewhere, but you're gonna lack damage if you do. But uh, your amulet and your rings, you know, you can get a lot of resist. In here, you want the uh, gain physical damage is extra cold, and there's probably some other mods that you can get on there. Um, you do want the Elrions. I don't have the negative seven. I'll probably grab that in a little bit, but non-channeling skills just because you know this is a mana eating build um if i'm not leeching it i can't i can't throw it right so i have to be leeching motherfuckers to uh for for this to fucking work right i am using a taming uh i'm i am using here um some boots that i crafted uh i got pretty lucky on these i think actually these were from rog rog has been pog uh 30 movement speed you do want onslaught so normally you would get just an onslaught flask or get it elsewhere, but here I have them on the boots. Uh, and I'm probably gonna throw the tailwind on them as well. So that's just gonna be my last probably big craft is like tailwind elusive onslaught boots. I was thinking even maybe going here and just scaling some elusive effect on it. I'm not 100% sure if I want to though, because I am pretty close to dodge capped, aren't I? Where's my dodge at? Yeah, I got 65, and yeah, once we have some other things going, it gets up there. Um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, and again, like your shield is the big thing. Now your um, and then your your main weapon is pretty easy to craft. Elishar has a video on it. Um, very easy. You just throw fossils at it basically, and you can roll it really easily. Gain uh, fizz as extra fire. Gain fizz as extra cold. And you want penetrate. Uh, you can also get crit multi, crit chance, all that crit multi goodness there. Um, and then you want the trigger. You don't have to get the trigger, but I do use the trigger for just the trigger walk because I'm not going to be using like a chant or anything like that. Actually, you can't use a chant anyway. For some reason, I thought you could. Um, now, I am using Hrim Soros, which is the worst aspect of my gear, right? This, th These things suck. Um, but what they do is give you 50% fizz converted to coal damage. Um, and then that with these nodes here, and you are fully cold, right? With these uh, conversion nodes here. But what you can do is you can get gloves that have like 23 to 28%, I believe, conversion. Then you can grab this one node here, and then you grab the Watcher's Eye Hatred, which is the last probably big upgrade I'll do on here um, before I fully switch over. Um, and you can see here, this is, uh, it's going to give you another 30% of conversion. So you're going to be around like 98%, I think, or maybe a little bit more, uh, full conversion. Um, uh, but that will give you a, a slot for way better gloves than, you know, what I'm using here. Um, it's just, yeah, it'll give you a much better slot for gloves than what I'm using here. But for now, you know, it's working. I'm getting pretty damn good damage. 
Um, I, I want to get up to at least 12 million before I call it quits on this guy and then move on to something else. But hell yeah, man, this guy has been so, so fun. Shout out to Crouching Tuna again. This build has been a blast. I've really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, man, I love these builds that just scale offense and defense. It's they're, ju they're just so good, right? Like, th like this shield, like, it's awesome, man. Like, the fact that you can scale dodge with it. Like, there's other things. That, like, this is a like, pretty crappy shield, right? But you're scaling your evasion. You're scaling your energy shield, right? Which is going to give you that life. Normally, raiders aren't pushing upwards to, like, 5,000 life or 5,000 effective EHP. You know what I mean? With that, with, like, a almost uh, capped dodge, which I can get with, like, more elusive and, and elusive effect. Like, we can get easily get up to the dodge cap. Super duper tanky. Um, as well as block, right? We're having 22% block. We can scale block easily. Um, you know, here I have a, almost full uh, avoidance here, right? Just so good, man. This character is just so much fun. Um, and here are the flasks I'm using, which I'm still not really sure how the flask tech is going. Like the in whole instilling orb thing, I haven't quite dove into. I know you can do some fun stuff with the overflowing chalice, but right now I've noticed that I was like, I used the instilling orbs to kind of auto trigger. What I had them doing was trigger when they were full, but I noticed I was still spamming them. So I was like, I, and then they just gave me less charges to use. So what I was, I just, I'm just using this with increased duration and then still just piano flasking away. So that's something I'm going to look into is kind of like playing around with the flask tech. Cause I know there's some really cool stuff that people are doing. I just haven't dove too deeply, too deeply into it. Um, yeah, so the big things with this build, the helmet, the shield, phantasmal spectral shield throw, once you're rolling over to crit, the watcher's eye, again, you know, the watcher's eye is like, you know, 15, 14, 15x. Altogether, I would say to get rolling like a good build where you're doing like good damage, you know, you're looking at a good amount of money, but nothing too crazy. If you don't know how to make money in this game, then you probably don't want to make this character because it is it's a raider so it's going to be it's going to be expensive but it's not as expensive as like you know these tornado shot builds it's not as expensive as ellie hit which is a build that i'm probably going to do later on maybe my last builds i love ellie hit um it's it's not as expensive like those like top tier bow builds because it's not going to clear as quickly as them but you know you are going to have like just a really good solid experience for a pretty good budget right um, and I, I've enjoyed it a lot. So yeah, this is what I've been playing. Went from the Exsanguinate that I showed you guys into the, um, what was the other building? Into the, uh, into something else and then into this. Moving, uh, oh, into the into the Lightning Arrow. Storm Rain was just drained my money. I mean, I think I threw like 20x at that build and I just, it, I was still like so far away from the amount of money that I needed to make that work. I didn't have a Headhunter. Right, you do want a headhunter with lightning. Air. Like, there's just so many other things that you need with it, and I was just like, not into it, man. wasn't really into. F I just wasn't really into it. But now that I kind of got my atlas, you know, it's up there. I'm almost finished with my atlas, almost at 164 on both. I'll probably think about going back to that because lightning arrow is pretty fun. But all right, anyways, now that that's out of the way, I do want to talk about the. Um, I do want to talk. I'm not. I wasn't even showing you guys. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't even showing you guys the the footage here, but anyways, I do want to talk about the interview that um, what's his name did uh, Chris Wilson did with the Bay Class guys. I thought this was really amazing, man. Like it's like I can't, I just don't know who, what, what other developer does this stuff. Like the community is really upset about this the latest patch. I mean the subreddit is just like it's like a dumpster fire. And instead of just hiding away, toiling away at the next patch, just, you know, doing what they got to do, he's sitting with the, these people that are yelling at him, telling him how to run his fucking game and taking questions from his community. Like, it blew my mind. Like, this, he, it, I, I don't know if the POE community understands how lucky they are to have someone at the lead who's Chris Wilson. Like, I really think, like, they, they forget sometimes how lucky we are to have him because, it, it's insane that he does this, right? It's so cool that he does all this stuff. But there, there are topics of discussion where I just found, I, I'm going to kind of go against the grain here. I, I don't agree with any of them. Like, I don't agree with any of the hosts here 
or I shouldn't say the host because they were taking questions from the chat, but I don't agree with any of the narratives that a lot of the people have been kind of putting out there, a lot of the community. For for one, right? I do think that this patch isn't the best patch. I don't think it's the best patch. I think the movement skills should be reverted. I think that's number one. I'm not too big on flasks because you can brick your flask and that's pretty fucking stupid. I've had my flasks brick and he talks about it in the podcast. Um, I am not a fan of the this uh, this notion of in, in addressing power creep in a way that makes the game easier, right? Like I, I, I don't want Chris Wilson to do that. I don't want GGG to make this game easier. You know what I mean? Like the fact that I can get to maps, start farming maps effectively, getting the currency I need to make a fucking meme build on day two is not good. The game needs to be harder. It needs to put more roadblocks in our way to make that journey longer. Now it doesn't need to be more annoying and I think what he said about the Atlas stuff is really good, right? He's going to be shortening the Atlas, making the Atlas a little bit smaller. I think that that's a good idea, step in the right direction. But um, I want to see more challenge thrown our way and more clever challenge, right? Not just like, I didn't really like the ultimatum challenges where they just like, you know, oh, your build's too good. Well, let's see how good it is against a thousand rares just spawning on you. That's stupid, right? That's not a smart way to do it. Expedition, on the other hand, is awesome. The logbooks are awesome, dude. Being able to pick and choose how difficult and how rewarding you want your content is amazing. That stuff is really, really cool. Like, I really like heist. I'm one of the few that really enjoys heisting. Like, I think the idea of, like, putting together this, like, ragtag team and going in and doing these big heists, I thought that was really fucking cool. And, like, this Expedition stuff is pretty cool. I'm excited to see what this next mechanic is, but... I enjoy like this kind of challenge, not the challenge that we got with Ritual, not the challenge that we got with Ultimatum. So like, I agree with that, with what he said on that. Um, the the one thing that I think is the issue here is the loot aspect. I do think loot is really bad and it's always been bad. It's in a bad spot, right? We're not killing monsters and picking things up off the ground, unfortunately. Like that's how it should be. If I go and I kill a really hard boss or even like a crazy, like, you know, you, you do like these beyond maps, right? You get a crazy frenzied beyond dude who's super duper hard to kill. He wipes you out a couple, you know, you waste like three or four portals on him. You finally take him down and he drops nothing. Like that's not cool. That, that sucks. And they've been talking about this like loot 2.0 thing for years now. It's like, Dude, we need the loop, like, stop with the, 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 you know, changing of things and work on that. That's the big, I think the biggest thing that your game needs is loot. It needs, a, like, a good loot drop. Because right now, what you do is you're farming for currency or you're farming for bases to craft with the currency that you farmed. That's the only way you're using those items. No one is, you know, fucking, no one is picking up items off the ground. And when Ziggy brings this up, right, Ziggy, Ziggy talks about, um, He's like, you know, currently, like, that's not how we're interacting. We're not picking up rares off people that we kill. And he goes, yeah, but I want to make that game. And it's just like, wait, you've been saying this for years, though. Like, I wanted Ziggy to be like, yeah, but we know you want to make this game. You've been saying this for years, so why don't you just make it? Like, obviously, instead of doing all this extra shit, like, you know how big a release that would be? Loot, you know, POE 317, Loot 2.0. That would be huge. So many people would come in and play. But yeah, instead they want to fuck around with flasks and they want to just like fuck the mana multipliers up and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, th those are the things that I think are the sticking points. But the best thing about this, and, and this is what I think is the most important aspect of this, right? The, 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 the best news that we got out of this, Chris Wilson is talking about hard mode. He's talking about this passion project that he has where it's basically he stripped away all of the power creep from the game and... He started playing it and he really enjoyed it. And he said, man, this is really cool. And, you know, let's, you know, get, let's let the other guys do it. Mark and whoever the other guy's name is. Uh, and they enjoyed it. And then he said people around the office wanted to play it as well. And they all, they all enjoy it. And what that signals, right? Not, not just what it signals is to his team, but what that signaled to Chris is that when you, even when you strip away all the power creep and all the extra bullshit from the game, the core game is still so good. Right, the core game is still so good 
that when you strip all that away, it's still rewarding and fun. And even more so because then you you are craving for those drops. You are getting that loot that you need when it does drop, right? Very Diablo-esque. Um, and that signals to me that that is where they're going to try to balance the game. They want that sort of convergence. So what they're going to do is they're going to split off basically the modes. And he's going to do all of that like hardcore nerdy testing stuff where he's going to like really kind of dig into the game and that's going to go into the hard mode and whatever they find like whatever those gold nuggets come out of that they're going to put into the main core game and i think that's the best idea now i do hope that if they do that they start to focus and balance the game around that hard mode because i think that would solve a lot of issues right give us options you know i think the worst thing that they did was start balancing around trade i don't think that was smart Balance around SSF, balance around the solo experience, because then you can actually put in, you know, you, you you can do the farming stuff. They can't do farming stuff. They can't do deterministic crafting if there's a if they're balancing around trade, it just doesn't work. But if you balance around SSF, if you balance around like a really hard game in SSF, you know, it makes the trade a lot easier. It devalues everything in trade. But that's what people want. Like people want to be able to get really good items without having to put in months of work, right? That's just gonna help all the trade people out. So I think that that's uh, one of the best things that we got out of this podcast. And, you know, a lot of people were like, I don't care about hard mode. I don't care about the, it's just like, yeah, but you weren't listening between the lines. He, he obviously knows that most people don't care about hard mode. What he's saying is, is that they're, they're finding that they can use this mode as a means, as a means to an end. They can use this mode to figure out the best ways to pull what's great about that core gameplay and throw that into the, the uh, soft core experience. Cause I, you know, I did play hardcore last league. I'm just, it's just too punishing for me. It's just too hard, man. It's t- it's too hard. I may go back to it, but until they kind of work out the defenses, until they work out some of the bullshit that just ha- like I don't know. I don't know how some of these hardcore players do it. Like Ziggy and and uh, um, Rays. I I don't know how they do it. Like it's they're truly gods. <laughs> they're fucking gods. You know, I get to like red tier maps and I start doing and. Like I start pushing a little too hard and that's it. And then it's just like, oh, okay, you know, 12 hours of fucking work just gone like that. But not only that, all of those awesome items that you got, that's like gone, you know, that's too punishing for me. But um, I would love more of a focus on balancing the game around that aspect because I think it would only help out those uh, soft core plebs, right? Um. So yeah, uh, uh, some of the other things that I'm excited about are the discussion with Grimro, right? Because I'm, you know, I'm I'm somewhat of a juicer myself, a little blaster myself, uh, and I'm excited to see kind of their input on the game. But what I hope at the end of the day comes out is I hope that they don't, I mean, I hope that they listen to everyone, but I hope they just do what they want. Like I hope GGG continues to say, we know that this is what the community wants. We know this is what's going to give us sales. But, like, we really think the game should go this way. I hope they continue to follow their gut. You know, sometimes it's not going to work out, right? The mana multiplier thing obviously was incorrect. He stated it himself, right? I think the movement skills are bad. Like, I think that they should revert the movement skills. But if they feel like this is going to lead to this, to this road that they think we should go down, then I'm all for it because, you know, I've trusted them this long and I'm, you know, it's, it's, I think one of the greatest games created. So they obviously know what the fuck they're doing and listening to Reddit and listening to, to streamers is probably not the best way to go about it. Um, you know, so yeah, that's it. So we're at week three. I'm having fun. Um, my next build, I'm not sure. I've been trying to think about what I'm re-rolling into. I'm going to finish this one up. It'll probably take me another week or so because I've just been going at a slower pace than I normally do. Um, I don't know. I kind of want to finish this one up. So I might just start doing some delis and just start juicing shit up and just kind of blasting away. Just take a day and just get the currency, get the watcher's eye and then, uh, finish the character off. Um, but then I'm switching and I don't know what I'm switching to. So I'll keep you guys updated on what's going on and yeah i would love to know your opinions on what's going on in the community what you think the future of poe holds from what it looks like i'm in the minority i'm one of the few that enjoy the direction that ggg normally takes people in i do want the game tougher i do want things kind of scaled back 
I don't think that having like awakened fucking exalts, uh, I don't think that that's a good idea. I think that the core game is really what matters. But I also don't want them to go too core because I just played Diablo 2 Resurrected and it was fucking terrible and boring. So I don't want them to go too far back. Like I, they, they need to find that good balance there. So yeah. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe. Put your comments down below and I'll catch y'all later. Peace.